third time's the charm. Here we go. What was our role in its creation? What was its role in ours? Yet had we not glimpsed it, we would not see it now. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change Part 9 theme. In today's episode, we re-entered reflecting on the work we've been doing on what we call chord sorts and our tonality reference area and what we call the flow from spreadsheets to compositions. We have a tonality reference sheet that looks like this, which has 120 chords in it. And then we've been working and finishing in this part, what we call the chord sorts, where everything is sorted by interval pair, the one ones, the one twos, the one threes, etc. And then when we have those kinds of sheets, which are represented by orange uh, and, and uh, green, actually green, the spreadsheets like we're working on here are orange and the sc musical scores are green, then we make compositions. So, um, and in having that kind of an organized system in order to compose, it still lets us compose improvising, but we kind of walk a line between stability and unpredictability. Anyway, it works. So the second thing is composing rhythms has become a thing in this series, which includes putting lyrics to music and music rhythm. We completed our vocalist transcription project, and then we ended up writing a theme poem, which we are called It, which is about the process of creating like music and when the music takes over and wants to go where it wants to go. So what we're going to do for you is play a little bit of the chord sorts down here in everybody's favorite area, 2.7 consonants, otherwise known as minor chords, major chords. Here we go. And here are the four threes. And then for cherry icing dessert, the suspended chords. And the nice thing about them, we know what's subdominant, what's tonic, what's uh, ambivalent and what's dominant so we can compose with that so that is our palette of 120 chords that we kind of dab into a, a, a new blank composition speaking of new compositions this is the full beat poem rhythm for what we have on the left the way we speak it is like this had we not glimpsed it we would not see it at the beginning, we saw a glimmering, full, complete. Yet, when we took it on, it grew only inch by inch. And it took over to where it was going and to where what it was going to be with us now along for the ride. What was our role in its creation? What was its role in ours? Yet, had we not glimpsed it, we would not see it now. Now here's the rhythm at the moment, and we'll make the volume a little bit louder.
So we like this interaction between rhythm, uh, lyric word, uh, lyric poem, uh, sound. Eventually we'll get back to imaging and to um, pitches. So our ideas for next time are to keep working with the chord sorts, add arpeggiation variations. You can see these are all ramp up. But every arpeggio has six possible ways for the notes to be played. Uh, make a work some more with the the it poem uh, and some other ideas here. Shout outs to Mr. Spatz, Eve, Dev, and Rippy for coming by. We appreciate you. Do come back. Do take care and do keep on streaming. <laughs>